Greetings folks, this is Victor Haskins. Welcome back to another episode of Let's Investigate. In this episode, we'll talk about some more tips on how to use a metronome to effectively practice notated music. Let's check it out. Okay, so before we go any further, I need you to go to the description box down below, click the link, and download the zip file for Metronome Practice version 2. Now we used version 1 in the last video, and version 2 is the same pitch and rhythm content, but with more detailed uh, articulation and dynamic content. So get Metronome Practice version 2, and of course, use whatever version is the proper transposition for your instrument. So if you play a concert pitch instrument, like a low brass, trombone, tuba, um, or guitar, or something like that, then you're going to use the concert pitch version. If you play a trumpet or a cornet like I do, you're going to use the B-flat version, and so on and so forth. So select the right transposition for you. And with that said, we're going to dive in here to metronome practice version 2. I want to talk about how we count, okay, because the metronome is kind of the referee, right? The metronome is not counting for us. We are always counting. We as the person, the musician, we are always counting. The metronome is the referee to keep us honest because the metronome is not going to waver from what the pulse is where you set it. So when you have the metronome on, that's not your chance to kind of turn your mind off and let the metronome count for you. The metronome is counting as a referee, sort of as a backup, because you should be counting in your mind. And specifically, when you're counting in your mind, you should be doing something called subdividing. What is subdividing? Well, if our beats are looking like little blocks, if we subdivide, we divide those blocks into half or into quarters or into other subdivisions, but usually we divide them into halves, okay? And by doing that, we make more beats, and that makes our counting more more precise, okay? So, uh, and a lot of metronomes have this function built into it, uh, this one certainly does. So if this is my beat, I am uh, have the metronome set at 60 beats per minute. This is quarter note, right? One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, but think about, between each of those quarter notes is all this space. One space, two space, three. So there's a lot of chance for imprecision and being imprecise with our counting. We either rush beats or drag beats. So some of the beats, instead of all the beats being uniform blocks, some of the beats are bigger, some of the beats are slightly smaller, and everything in between. So we're constantly like kind of rushing and dragging as we're playing if our sense of pulse isn't strong. So we want to practice something called subdivision as we're counting. So instead of just counting one, two, three, four, we count one and two and three and four and so I'm dividing each beat into eighth notes, each quarter note into eighth note. So uh, on my metronome, I can I can change this function to actually subdivide for me, which will help me to subdivide in my mind. So it will have two different tones playing, one for the downbeat and one for the upbeat for these eighth notes. So here's what that sounds like: one, two, three, four. One and two and three and four and so why do I bring this idea of subdivision? That sounds like it's a lot of extra work. And at first it kind of is because now you have to keep track of more beats regularly going in your head because as I'm practicing or playing a piece of music, the beat is that 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 that, that clicking sound is happening in my head. Right, and it might not sound exactly like that, but the way I'm keeping the beat to make everything steady is happening like that in my body, inside my imagination. We want that because we want precision when we practice. So when we look at this bar four, we're going to start in bar four. We already practiced bar five through eight um, for the last piece. I want to start in bar four and act like we're continuing to practice um, going to the front of the piece. So we'll do bar four, bar three, bar two, bar one. But let's talk about using this subdivision method for these, especially these two bars here. So bar four, 
So remember, our, our quarter note is 60. This is subdividing, and it's giving us 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and. Okay? So if we look, look at the bar 4 and we just like, on a, on a da, we sing the pitch, uh, the rhythms and the articulations, then here's what we get. 1, 2, 3, bar 4. Da, 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 da. Okay? That was bar 4. I'll do it one more time. One, two, three, four. Da, dit, 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 dit. Or I could count it with syllables. I could say one, two, three, four. One, two, and three, and four, and. Okay, so that's how I count that with syllables. However you choose to do it, just make sure that you're counting the rhythms accurately and you're counting them with good pulse. Um, so that's that's me doing like a, a demo practice of that and I would actually do that in a practice session because we don't want to waste a bunch of energy making mistakes or trying to figure things out on the horn. Uh, whatever instrument you're playing might not have um, such energy limitations but as a trumpet player uh, you only have so much endurance for the day so you want to kind of conserve that for moments when it, it really makes sense to like play the horn versus just trying to figure it all out on the horn. You want to kind of figure it out away from the horn and then put it on the horn when you've got it all together. So now we just got the rhythm together, we got the articulation together. Let's think about these dynamics. So we see a decrescendo in bar four, which means in bar five, we have mezzo piano. So if we look at our dynamic spectrum, piano is soft, forte is loud, and so it's saying it wants us to decrescendo to mezzo piano, which is about here in relation to the, these, these uh, levels, right? Piano, mezzo piano, mezzo forte, forte. Now, where are we going from to get to mezzo piano? Where well, we're going from forte, how do I know that? Well, if we look one bar before, bar four, in bar three, we see forte. So that's our di starting dynamic in bar four. So we're starting at forte, and we're going down to mezzo piano. So we need to get from here and decrescendo to this level. Okay, so let's, let's sing that one more time, and then we'll play it. So here you go, forte. Two, three, bar, four. Da, 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 da. Okay, so that was that was singing through all of what bar four has to offer. Let's play it now. I can turn my metronome back to the unsubdivided setting. Just our regular time. This is bar four. Here we go. One, two, ready, and. <laughs> Okay, so that's our decrescendo, that's our staccatos. Um, let's now go to bar three. Now here's where subdividing might be useful, especially if you have some tricky rhythms that maybe you don't recognize, or you're not sure if you're counting them right. Subdividing helps to break down uh, the beats in the bar so you can count more precisely. So I'm going to go back to subdividing and my eighth notes at 60. So now let's count bar three. Let's go through bar three. We're going to count it and then we'll add the dynamics in a second. But first let's get these rhythms right. Okay, so we see a quarter note on beat one. We see four sixteenth notes on beat two. Now remember we're in four four time which means we have four beats in the measure and the quarter note gets the beat. So we have a quarter note on beat one. Beat two is divided into four sixteenth notes. Beat three has two eighth notes, beat four has two eighth notes. Okay, so let's put our metronome on. <coughs> just on a da, I just wanna uh, sing all the rhythms. Here we go. One, two, and three, and measure three. Da, 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 da. Let's do it one more time. Two, measure three. Da, 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 da. Okay, cool, so I just sang all of the movement, all the rhythms. Now I'm going to sing it with the right articulation. Okay, so what are the articulations in bar three? There's slurs and some notes are tongue, but it's mostly slurs. Uh, so let's sing the correct articulations on bar three, which means I'm going to sing it and slur where I would slur on the horn and articulate where I would articulate on the horn. So here's what that sounds like. Two, measure, three. Da, 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 da. Okay, so you hear how I'm just singing on a ah, 
the same way I would not articulate on the horn so I can get that slurred effect. Once again, we're trying to connect our mind to this ingredient, this recipe, so that way when we connect our mind to the horn, we get the result we want with the least effort possible. Okay, now let me add the crescendo because we're crescendoing from uh, pianissimo, which is in bar one, and we, our crescendo starts in bar two, but a bulk of the crescendo is in bar three. So let's start as though we're in the middle of that crescendo, okay? Up to forte for the rest of bar three. So here we go. Four, we're going to reach forte on beat three. Two, ready, and da, 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 da. Okay? Cool. Let's play it now. Bar three. One, two, ready, and... Alright, so that was bar three and bar four. Okay, let's look one bar before bar three and bar two. That's where our crescendo starts. We have a quarter note, a quarter rest, and two quarter notes. Okay, I'm not going to spend a bunch of time counting this one. This is much simpler than bar three was. Let's turn our subdivision off there. And once again, we're starting at pianissimo, and then we're crescendoing to forte. So I'm going to start in measure two, and then I'm going to end in bar four. One. Two, ready, and. Okay, so we have that big dynamic contrast between pianissimo at the beginning of bar two and forte on bar, beat three of bar three. So, now let's start in bar one. And let's play those first four bars. Starting again, once at pianissimo, and then we're going to end up at forte in bar three. One, two, beginning, and... Okay, so that is the beginning of metronome practice. And at this point, we have practiced the entire piece. So I hope that what I talked about in this lesson made sense. Um, I know it was a lot of nitpicking, but that's really how we get the beauty to come out in these pieces is finding the dynamic contrast and, and the articulations and figuring out how all of it comes together to make this unified musical statement. Once again, always practice at a very slow tempo where you have complete control of everything. And as you master it, like I just finished mastering this whole thing. So now if I'm going to work it up to our tempo, our, our performance tempo of moderato, I'm going to start bringing it up one click at a time. I'm going to play from measure one through measure eight. And if I nail it, turn it up one click, one click, 61, 62, 63, 64. And eventually we'll get to 100 beats per minute, which is our target tempo for performance and 100 beats per minute will feel as easy and as controlled as 60 beats per minute did. And that's the key to practicing effectively, frustration-free, because slow and steady wins the race. Remember, good practice builds good habits, okay? So, thank you guys for watching. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section down below. Uh, like, share, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and see us next Friday for another episode of Let's Investigate. Thank you.